I mean, you know, we, we don't have to look any further in the past than just, you know, a year and a half ago when we saw um, John Magafuli, um, who was trying so hard and successfully, um, you know, getting control of his um, his nickel, um, which is, you know, Elon Musk said that nickel is one of the most, um, you know, um, one of the most needed things for EV batteries is nickel. There's yeah. several kilograms of nickel in every battery. And um, MAGA fully, it wasn't right away. He was elected in 2015 and he was so liked in Tanzania at first that, you know, CNN and BBC, everyone celebrated this. They even, um, CNN even um, reported that there was a new word in the Tanzanian, you know, lexicon um, called MAGA fullify. And it was to... I have it over here. That, um, it was to render or declare an action cheaper or faster and deprive public officials of their capacity to enjoy life at the taxpayer's expense. So all the way in Tanzania, thousands of miles away in the U.S., CNN is talking about how much um, Tanzania likes their new president because he's just he's getting rid of corruption. He's changing the country. And then slowly but surely, he was getting rid of too much corruption. He was changing the country too much. He got rid of... Um, he got rid of a few Gates funded um, GMO projects and kicked um, Gates out of the country. And he ended up actually um, outlawing GMO um, production because it was all Western technology in the country for good. Um, and then the pandemic happened and he didn't he refused to buy the vaccines from COVAX. He um, talked bad about the PCR test. He, he, he didn't believe that it was um, it was too uh, useful in detecting coronavirus. And yeah, didn't he the, didn't he uh, stage a kind of public stunt to mock the PCR test where he would yes yeah no on on state television he he um, he they did a COVID test on a, I think it was a pawpaw which is like a fruit and a goat yeah. and motor oil and they all came back positive and he was like listen we're not we're not going to shut down the economy because of these tests they obviously aren't working um, correctly um, and you know the Western media did not like that and on top of that during the same time. He was nationalizing his green, quote unquote, green mineral wealth in the country. And um, he actually signed a law that um, discounted and um, ended any past um, mineral contract with a mining giant um, before he became president. So he had um, full reign to rewrite the contract. And he also um, fined Barrick and Acacia, which are two Western mining giants, billions of dollars, $190 billion in some cases, um, for um, not paying their taxes and for um, poisoning Tanzanian waterways. So they were really, really upset with him. And they had the biggest nickel deposit in the world in Tanzania. And so there's tons and tons of Western mining giants who wanted to get their hands on this. And they knew how important it was for this, you know, green electric electrification and the fourth industrial revolution where everything has to be digitized. And um, it was this uh, nationalization where he forced these companies to have partnerships with the with the government, the federal government. Um, and if they didn't want to, they have to leave. Uh, yeah. He was he, you know, he was really nationalist. And, you know, we would see these articles coming out when, while this was happening. Oh, this guy is crazy. He's too Tanzania first. Even the, the Center for Strategic, um, it, what is it? Um, CSIS. Yes. They, they mentioned, I mean, they obviously don't like him. And they, even they mentioned he's liked by Tanzanians because he says that his country was taken advantage of by imperialists since, the, since um, the, they gained their independence. And... This is a intelligence tied think tank in mm -hmm. Washington, very connected to the Pentagon, the intelligence apparatus. And here they are basically <clears throat> putting a target on Magafuli's back. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, you know, he's doing all these things that go against the World Economic Forum and Western mining interests and corporations. And um, and also during the pandemic, all those ph pharmaceutical interests and uh, he didn't shut down his company, uh, I mean, his country and. Then he was reported missing and then he was reported dead. I mean, I'm not saying he was off or assassinated, but it is interesting when, you know, you have an African leader doing all these things against the interests of the United States and Western corporations simply um, disappear and die in the middle of his you know, policy changes. So talk more about that. I mean, he said to have died of a heart attack, but he disappeared. 
It was yeah, it was, serious. it was supposedly missing for about um, two weeks. And then they were like, OK, he's he had a heart attack. And then the media couldn't really get their story straight. It was he had a heart attack, but they, he had COVID. Um, and while this was happening, um, his main political opponent um, in the country who used to work for the World Resources Institute, which is a giant, you know, um, green energy lobbying firm, mining lobbying firm, was saying he's when he was still alive, supposedly was saying he's dead, you know, putting out all of this misinformation. Um, so it, the, the whole thing was a very interesting saga where it ended with the with his passing and the um, his vice president um, was put into power. Um, she's since um, allowed Western Mining Corporations more control than MAGA Fooley did, which is, um, I guess, not surprising, which is unfortunate for the Tanzanian people. Um, and she also brought in Tony Blair to um, be their uh, special uh, assistant envoy on climate change mitigation, which includes yeah. you know, um, which mining interests, which is an interesting, you know, Tanz he dies and then they bring in, you know, the, the biggest hawk, um, Tony Blair. So it's it's a it's a sad story. And, and the Megafoolie's president also had some relationship with Bill Gates. Am I mm. right about that? Yeah, no, she um, she was she comes from the U.N. Um, and while she was at the U.N., she did um, give money and take money um, from the Gates Foundation and enact a few partnerships between, you know, food initiatives and the Gates Foundation. Um, and then she became the president after the current president was kicking out Gates. So it is it's all very um, interesting timing. Yeah. So here you have the CSIS again, this spook think tank in Washington, one year of Tanzanian president Hassan, what's changed? And here they, you can see her getting the jab, <laughs> getting the MRA the jab. On television, uh, as soon as he died, as soon as he died, it's, she's kind of like, we're going to be injected with mm -hmm. lots of foreign investment. Um, <laughs> so, you know, marks the one year anniversary of Tanzanian president Samir Salu, who is Hassan's inauguration and her, you know, they're, they're cl clearly celebrating her. They're saying, how would President Hassan handle t Tanzania's reputational fallout from five years of Magafuli's autocratic rule? Um, meaning his reputation among CSIS and people funded by Bill Gates and the Tony Blair Institute, because his reputation in Tanzania compared to any other African presidents was practically peerless. His approval rating was massive. He was a national hero. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really interesting to see them say autocratic rule when you have BBC, um, the second year of Magafuli's presidency, saying um, that Magafuli has a 96 percent approval rating. I mean, that's that's crazy. And that's coming from, you know, Western media. So to say it was autocratic is, you know, it just doesn't line up with what the Western media said before. And a number of African leaders died early on in the pandemic of mysterious deaths who we're not going along with the program. Is that correct? Yeah, there was, I mean, there was, we had, we had deaths and we also had, um, you know, people driven from power and replaced with, you know, either um, someone else in a different party in their country. But um, I believe it was Burundi. Am I correct? Burundi. Yeah. So it, you had Tanzania's Magafuli, you had Burundi. Um, these were the two countries, I believe on the entire continent that didn't order, um, any COVID vaccines from Bill Gates's COVAX. So the fact that the two presidents that didn't order any vaccines from COVAX, um, you know, died, unfortunately, you know, they passed away, whether it was a heart attack or there was COVID um, it, within the same, uh, you know, half a year um, when there aren't many deaths of presidents in Africa going back or going forward since then. Um, it's definitely interesting timing. It's something to think about. Yeah. It is an Eritrea, also a target yeah, of the Eritrea, US empire, target of an invasion. I'm not saying the invasion has anything to do with it, mm -hmm. but it, it it never enacted a mass vaccination program at all uh, or around COVID. It, it, it following the wishes of its citizens, and that's consistent with just Eritrea's general position on issues like foreign debt, mm -hmm. avoiding getting in bed with the IMF and maintaining independence. And uh, I was going to pull up a New York Times article just because it was kind of like the perfect epilogue 
to the whole Magafuli saga, which is that Africa is experiencing low COVID death rates and no one knows why. They're doing very well without having uh, engaged in lockdowns and ma mandates and mass vaccination. Kind of some, an article that all of the um, you know hysterical professional left wing activists who are howling about vaccine apartheid and basically being yeah vaccine equity people. vaccine apartheid this was a you know uh, this was a very interesting time in on the left um, where you had you know these supposed um, self proclaimed you know anti imperialists and leftists saying that these countries in Africa they need to be injected with this highly profitable um, product that's made by a Western corporation that's broken the law, you know, hundreds of times. Yeah. Um, so it, it was it was an interesting and unfortunate time um, in political discourse. Um, but you had these countries, you know, we we heard vaccine equity and vaccine apartheid. But in the countries, you were seeing, you know, country after country, they would finally get their vaccines from COVAX or they would get their uh, COVID aid, which included vaccines, and they would open up their vaccine centers and they would say, you know, there are nurses or vaccine um, vac people who give the vaccine sitting idle with no patients. They just they the people in Africa. I'm not going to speak for all African people, but there are there are many, many nations in Africa where they had vaccine access, but there was literally no demand or uptake. Yeah. Um, and then you had Martinique a French colony in the Caribbean actually staged an armed insert, an armed rebellion against Macron's mm -hmm. vaccine mandate. Vaccine centers were burned there. It's spe French special forces were called in for some reason. The left took no interest in this anti-colonial rebellion. Um, so th these people then, were, these people were like, they were into like QAnon or something. Yeah. Well, that, that's what like uh, French liberals said about them. They called, yeah. they, they tried to compare them to DeSantis's Florida. Yeah. Um, and I think they called, they had some racist term for them in France, like black rednecks. Cause they wouldn't go along with it. Here's science.org. The pandemic appears to have spared Africa so far. Sci scientists are struggling to explain why, um, you know, meanwhile you had these groups like the progressive international with their beautiful Helvetica website calling for vaccinating everyone in Africa in order to, pr to end the pandemic. They didn't understand how science works. Um, had, so here in New York, just to add this, uh, to close the conversation, they had die-ins um, yeah. in front of Pfizer where they said, you know, free the vaccines, um, free yeah. the patents, give the vaccines to all these countries in Africa. And they would just lay dead in front of Pfizer saying, you know, it was very anti-revolutionary, but they thought it was, you know, the most progressive cause. It was send vaccines to Africa, even though that they don't have any liability and that they haven't been tested and this and that. Just give them to Africans because that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Without asking them if they wanted them. And, and so no one knew exactly. they, no, no one seemed to know the, the tale, the cautionary tale of John Magafuli or mm -hmm. why he was popular. And yeah, we're, we're still talking about this. We're talking about Magafuli, you know, 18 months after it happened. And it's still interesting. It was, you know, we were, it, it's almost like people have a, um, you know, that they, they it's in the middle of a war almost like people don't, we had a revolutionary African mysteriously die during COVID and nobody blinked, especially on the left. And so we're talking about it now months later. Um, but when it actually happened, it was it really not a peep from the people who you would think um, would be all over that. It, it was shocking. And so um, one of the few really good articles was produced by you and Whitney Webb about John Megafuli at this at this time. I recommend everyone read it at Unlimited Hangout, Tanzania's late President Magafuli, science denier or threat to empire. And, you know, as you point out, along with all of the challenges he put to the quote unquote science, which has been revealed as scientism and largely discredited, he was challenging the one of the most important industrial projects on the African continent being put forward by multinational corporations, which is mining for these minerals. Um, and they go hand in hand, the mineral mining, the COVID hysteria, it all, and it all comes together at the World Economic Forum. This is all part of the same agenda of controlling minerals and also controlling humanity and our behavior and 
our our biology to merge it with the digital and the african challenge to this as you said was ignored or actually denigrated in the left i saw some left-wing activists sharing a wall street journal article smearing magafuli mm -hmm. you know that was it was everywhere i mean it was you know we said science denier like i mean obviously it rhymes with empire and that that worked out but because he was being framed as a science denier on the left because science denier is a you know it's a great phrase for them to throw around on anyone who doesn't get down with the entire you know ruling class um you know game whether it's you know stopping climate change through the mass you know colonization and neocolonization of africa or you know stopping covid through record you know pharmaceutical profits and um if you don't if you don't get down with those you're a science and I, even if you're a revolutionary um president in in africa on the left yeah 